What's going on everyone? This is Pilot in Command here, and as promised, I'm going to bring you a video about how to set up Butterflight on an F3 flight controller. Now, this is not going to be a full in-depth um, step-by-step programming guide to Butterflight because it's essentially the exact same as Betaflight, and there's already tons and tons of videos out there about how to set this up. Actually, a really good one that I'll link down in the video description is Joshua Bardwell's um, Ultimate uh, Betaflight 3.3 Setup Guide. So if you go and watch that video, the steps to set, um, I guess, Butterflight up is exactly the same as if you're going to set up Betaflight. So like calibrating your accelerometer, programming, uh, or setting up your, your UART, setting up your receiver, setting up the OSD, all of that is going to be the same as if you were setting up something on Betaflight. However, if you are running an F3 flight controller, like me, then these are the settings that I recommend. And actually, let me just kind of uh, pan over here really quick. This is my rig right here. For those of you who don't know, I do fly an Impulse RC Reverb. However, I am using a lot of components that people would consider to be old. For example, these are the original Emacs Red Bottoms. They are the Emacs RS2205 2300KV motor literally have been on the market for about two and a half, almost three years. This is the TBS flight controller. This, uh, the sorry, this is the TBS power cube. The flight controller is an F3 flight controller. I've been running this thing for about seven to eight months now. Uh, these ESCEs are about two months old. The power distribution board is is really old. So. How, and this aircraft does have butterfly on it. So what I'm trying to say is, is that this should work for you because I'm using equipment that's pretty old and I just flash this on this guy following the same procedure as if I would set up something on Betafly and I haven't had any problems. So that being said, let's get started. So I'm just gonna run you through this because this is kind of where most of the magic happens. So. By default, uh, Butterfly should be set to Quad X. Um, that's just what I run, uh, standard motor configuration. Motor direction is not reversed. For ESCs, I run D-Shot 600. I just, uh, this is just completely stock, uh, nothing really done there. Board alignment's completely stock. However, this is where things get interesting. So, at least the power cubes gyro, gyro is, is a, it's a MPU 6000 gyro, I think is the correct term. So I can't do 32 kilohertz. And since I'm also running an F3, you wanna, if you wanna run an F3 and do butterfly, I recommend going setting your gyro update frequency in PID loop to 4K, 4K. That'll keep your CPU load uh, pretty low. Um, and I have not had any problems with this. So going down, uh, this is just FCC call sign. I just check that just because serial based receiver, S bus. And I, so, I mean, all this stuff is pretty standard, same uh, as beta flight. So in the uh, other features tab here, I have telemetry selected because like, cause I'm running smart port telemetry from my X4R SB. I have air mode selected. I have anti-gravity selected, and I also have the dynamic filter selected. I don't use the D-Shot beacon, this just makes the the D-Shot um, ESC's uh, tone as beeper. I don't use, I haven't set that up yet. Uh, and then this is just also just a beeper calibration for when I want, when I want to run a beeper. So that's pretty much it for the uh, configuration page. The, the main takeaways from this page if you're running, uh, for those of you who are running F3 boards, just set them to 4K, uh, 4K for your gyro, 4K for your PID loop. And then if you're running telemetry, that's fine. Go ahead and select this. But the three main ones you want to select are definitely air mode, anti-gravity, and dynamic filter. The last thing is actually going to be in the CLI tab. Now, this is just what I recommend, okay? On Butterflight's uh, website, this is their website right here, just butterflight.co, at the very bottom they've got some command line options. 
What I did is I basically um, copied, ah, hold on. This bottom half right here, what I've got outlined, I basically copied this and pasted it into the command line. Sorry, I'm just gonna focus this for you really quick. So basically just copy this, go into your CLI tab and just paste it in here, type save, press enter, and you're good to go. Actually here, I'll just, I'll show you how it, what I do. But actually what I did is I copied this in, these in one at a time, so I highlighted, highlighted this, copied, pasted, and then I pasted it into the command line, type save, press enter. When you do that, your board will basically disconnect. You have to reconnect, go back to the CLI tab, then I went over, I went back to the internet, grabbed these two items, pasted them in the uh, command line like I did before with this, type save, press enter, and I was good to go. So in closing, I just want to say that the setup that I've just kind of talked about in this video, I have not had a problem with. I've been flying it for pretty much uh, for a good three or four, like three weeks now. Um, and I have not had a problem. My aircraft has performed extremely well and um, none of my components are showing any signs of damage or like, hey, this is bad. You should maybe get butterfly off of your flight controller. So if you're running an F3, this is what I recommend. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them down in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. All right, I'm gonna go to bed now. Thanks so much for watching. See y'all in the next video. Bye.